Bosnia indeed. But first, we've got a charming journey through an arrangement of skulls that Senzo has set up in a way that looks most artistic, far more artistic than I could ever hope to be. As you can see, there is a map of Kenya. Yes, I know you all have Google, but sometimes it's nice to just talk through things in a hand-drawn way, and of course you get to laugh at my map drawing skills. First of all, there's a disclaimer, because the scale says non-existent. Existent was also spelt wrong initially, because apparently whenever I come into this tent, I become illiterate. So there is no scale to this map. It is not accurate, so that is my disclaimer for as we go ahead. It's more for a sense of where we are more than anything else. Though, Nairobi is in the wrong place. Nairobi is sort of there. This is Kenya, this pit here. So there is Nairobi, the capital city. That is where we will be flying into. And then from there, flying to the Mara Triangle and staying roughly somewhere around there. Again, a rem gentle reminder, it is not to scale at all. So that is where we will be. This will be the Mara Triangle over here. This is the border with Tanzania. And this is a mistake, and I think that's probably how in the past wars were started between countries when cartographers and plotters uh, got things wrong. Uh, please ignore that. That is not, Tanzania is not planning an invasion of that part of Kenya to change their boundary. And we'll definitely not go with that. Over here is, of course, the Great Lake Victoria, not to scale, passing into Uganda, which will be on our western boundary. And then, of course, Rwanda and Burundi over here. Exciting things happen in this part of the world. And look, just look how close we are, because this, of course, is where the gorillas lie or sit or eat or whatever it else gorillas do. No, oh, not saying anything more, but how exciting is that? Much closer proximity to gorillas than we might otherwise have been. South Sudan, I don't think we're going to be going there anytime soon. I would prefer to not go to South Sudan at the moment. I'd love to go to South Sudan, but maybe not right now. The same applies to Ethiopia and Somalia. So those are our, bound, our neighbors to the north. Obviously, that is a part of the world that is at the moment in the grips of a terrible, terrible drought. And not just that, of course, all kinds of civil strife. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I just want to point out a little red dot on the map over there. For those of you that want to do some reading, have a look into Dadaab. It is one of the largest refugee, if not la the largest refugee camp in the world, Dadaab, taking in people from all sorts of troubled countries. Important to remember when we go and enjoy another country's wildlife to make ourselves aware of the struggles that they face in whatever way. I'm not going to get political about it. It's just an awareness that there are people out there who are struggling to get through life. So just, just a little thought. Then Lake Tukana up here. This is Lake Tukana and the Great Rift Valley that flows down through there. And there we go. That, in a nutshell, is Jamie's impression of Kenya, having never actually been there. Beautifully artistic, is it not, Lou? I feel as though I've done a marvellous job. This, of course, is the ocean. Abs <laughs> Lou's not impressed with my artwork. It's okay, Lou. I was never going to be an artist. As I once said before, my art teacher kindly said to me once when I was choosing my subjects for my final years of school, my art teacher just said to me, listen, don't, don't even try. Just don't. It, it's not going to work out between you and art, which was actually very, very good advice. I did music instead. Right, what was I? Oh, yes, Priscilla. Priscilla, you had a question. Just while we were looking at the map, obviously this ties in quite nicely. You want to know about the difference in the terrain. What will it allow us to do? What won't it allow us to do? And so on. Um, and you want to know if it will impact the tracking of the animals. I think we're going to be faced with a lot of challenges. I think it's going to be very, very different. On the one hand, it's very open, which is going to be awesome. You know, when we, we follow wild dog hunts, for example, out here, 99.99% .99 of the time we don't get them when they actually make the kill, unless we're following them with a drone, just because um, aside from the vehicle impact that we have, it's just impossible for us to get to certain places at the speed they go. Not that there's that many dogs that we're likely to see, but for example, filming a cheetah hunt in a wide open space with a fantastic zoom, that's going to be hugely beneficial. 
and yes we will be driving at night and yes we will be driving off road that in turn is probably going to complicate things at least it's open but there's also large rocks and large holes and I can almost guarantee that we are going to smash a few axles we're going to get stuck I know I'm going to get stuck I'm going to put that out there right now there's a very good chance especially driving in the dark without headlights on in the following hunting lions or whatever it happens to be James has done it once I have no judgment here it's very very difficult to do so we're going to get stuck we're going to be presented with challenges we're going to have a huge amount of fun tracking I'll, I'll let you know once we're there I think it is going to be a different experience I'm not sure how much leeway we're going to have in terms of hopping out and just disappearing in the same way that we do here which drives of course the directors insane when all of a sudden they look to go back to you and you've vanished off into the bush somewhere but I'm not sure what the leeway is going to be for that I really don't know I'm excited though the unknown is is half the fun so there you go, a little summary of Kenya and the interesting things we're going to see. This, by the way, oh, lost a lid. That is a water stain, not a country. Lance, you want to know if I can show you the river crossings for the Great Migration? Not off the top of my head. I'd have to sit and double check on a map. So I could give you a completely mistaken impression. I don't want to go down that route. I will, I'd rather look it up and double check for you first. I don't know exactly where they're going to be. I'm totally unfamiliar with this area. I know it's there, I know that the, the wildebeest, of course what Lance is talking about for our new viewers is the places where during the great migration of wildebeest, gazelle and so on, the animals actually cross through certain points of the river and it's, there's a lot of bloodshed which I have to say, I'm, I think it's going to be extraordinary, I think it's going to be a spectacle, but I'm not particularly excited about it. I saw some of the footage, of course we've all seen footage from the Mara crossings and we've seen some of the footage from James. I there may or may not be cameras up there at some point keeping an eye on what's going on so we'll just have to wait and see lance apologies i don't want to give you a false impression i don't think that would be a very good idea at all uh, with the promise of activity in the mara i think we all need to catch up on some rest beforehand in just the same way vutomi is doing